Hello, everyone. We're going to talk about leveling up your business by conquering those fears. And I'm sure you guys are probably thinking right now, hmm, yes, I do have some fears. I do. What are those fears? You know, start thinking about what those are because you know there are many fears that we come across or like realize when we are trying to build our business because we got to do. There are things we have to do. There are things that we learn and we know that if we do this thing, that it's going to be really great for our business, yet we're too afraid to take that first step. So I want to kind of get in here and talk about a strategy that we could use to conquer those fears. Hey, Christine. So here it goes. If we have not met yet, and this is your first time um, seeing me live, I'm Eileen Alvira. I'm here to inspire, motivate, educate entrepreneurs like you on how to use digital marketing skills and social media to grow your business online. You might be wondering why is she wearing that hat, that little circus hat or whatever hat it is. I just did a live in the other in my group and I was trying to catch their attention. So I'm like, I'm going to wear the hat, the goofy hat, and they're going to click on the video. <laughs> so I have it on now and if I take it off, it'll look all sweaty and all that. So, hey, Stephanie. So if you guys, are, I think you guys might be in my group, go check out the little video I just did before this. I mean, after this video, of course, um, because I talk about the cool prizes that someone's going to win if they win this contest at the end of two weeks. So go check that out after this video. But today, let's talk about fears. If you guys are hopping on here, please let me know who you are. If you're watching me on replay, hashtag replay so I could circle back and a say hello to you guys. Philip, there you are. Philip was over there the, on the other side. So we're going to talk about this. And I, I actually heard someone talking about this today. It was Dean Graziosi, and I'm going to give him credit as I always do. He was talking about, uh, actually, it wasn't Dean Graziosi. Duh, it was Brendan Bouchard. And he was talking about fears and courage. He's actually talking about courage. And first of all, let's talk about what the differences are uh, between fear or fearless and courageous, right? When you're courageous, it means you are going to do something in spite, or is it despite of the fear? So you can still have the fear present and still do that thing. And that what's, that's what makes you courageous. Also, fear is something that hasn't happened yet. It's always in the future, maybe, right? Because sometimes it never happens. It's that, what is it called? False evidence appearing real. So when we're like, we're afraid of someone jumping out at us behind a bush. Well, we don't know if that's going to happen, right? That's in the future. And it might not even happen. It's something you're making it up in your head or something like that. So fear is, that's how it's different. Being fearless and being courageous. And, you know, you use it, you use both of those things to your benefit, depending on what situation you're in. And we won't go into that because we can go long and long talking about that. <laughs> so I was like reminded, I remember when I was, I believe I was about 20 years old, maybe 19. Yeah, Christine, I know. I remember when I first heard that, I thought, oh yeah, that's so true, right? Anyways, about the differences between fear and courage. I mean, so I was reminded when I was about 19 or 20, I was in, I was in a band and I used to have to drive. I used to live in Southern California in San Gabriel Valley. If you guys don't know where that is, it's about East, uh, Southeast of, wait, is it Southeast though? Los Angeles? Yeah, and it could be. <laughs> I know that it's East. It might be Northeast or just directly East. Anyways, I used to have to drive all the way to North Hollywood for practice. And that was about an, almost an hour away from me. It's the other valley, the San Fernando Valley, the valley that you guys all know, like, oh my God, gag me with a spoon, you know, like that is in the San Fernando Valley. I did not live in that valley, but I would drive there for practice. And it would always be after school or people had work. So it would be after work, you know, and it would, so it would be at night. So our practices would literally start at like 8 PM, which is like after dinner. Right. And so I drive over there. And then by the time we finished, it would, I think the earliest we've ever finished was midnight. So when I would have to drive home, it would be super late, dark, an hour away. 
and I have to make sure I don't fall asleep, you know, and all whatever comes with that. And like, we would have to go fully kind of, we couldn't go bummed out. We had to be sort of put together because our manager sometimes would take us places. And her number one rule was you can't go out looking like crap. So we had full makeup on. Sometimes we were dressed, you know, it depends. And so, so needless to say, 20 year old me looked like a party girl every time she went to band practice. Okay. And I'm not talking about like band, like clarinets and trumpets. <laughs> I'm talking about like actual, I was in an R&B old girl group. There was four of us. And so I remember one night I was driving home and I was alone this time. Cause sometimes I, one of the, our brother, group. He lives near me. So sometimes we would carpool, but this particular night we didn't. And so I was driving home and it was about one in the morning. And I remember driving and falling, like getting drowsy at like maybe the 45 minute mark, which is almost home. Right. And (laughs) Sarah said, I have a supervisor always said, where's your lips? AKA put lipstick on. Exactly. And that's exactly what she meant because she owned a restaurant and it was, and sometimes there was a stage in her restaurant and sometimes just like out of the blue, she'd be like, okay, girls go sing. And we'd be like, whoa. So we weren't allowed to look like, like we just rolled out of bed basically. <laughs> and so I was driving home and it was one in the morning and I'm kidding you not. My mom's here. She can attest to this. Right when I, and I was alone, when I was exiting off of my exit, I had already driven for almost an hour. I fell asleep for like a split second and my car and I was in a small, I used to drive a sprint. You guys know what that is? It's a three cylinder hatchback little car. Okay. And a a Chevy sprint. And I crashed into, okay. You know, the over here I'm exiting, it's going like this way. Right. And I crashed into the curb that was going off the off ramp. And I don't know what happened because I fell asleep. But basically my car didn't flip, thank goodness, but it like, it like skipped over the curb and like went onto like the, the, the little hillside that that goes down towards the freeway. Cause the, the exit goes like up like that. And I woke up and I was okay. Right. And I was like, Oh my God, this, you know, and so I survived the accident, but then I realized, crap, it's like, one o'clock. Well, actually it's like past one o'clock by that time. Right. And I was like, what do I do? Uh, We didn't have cell phones back then. And I was like, how do I contact my parents? That they're, they're only like two miles away, maybe not even three, yeah, two miles away. How am I going to contact them? There's no way I'm going to walk these streets at one 30 in the morning dressed like this. I literally like had a mini skirt, my hair was all nice, all done up, whatever. And this, so I'm waiting there wondering how, what I'm going to do. Now, if you guys remember when we're teenagers, we're pretty fearless. Yeah. And so I'm outside of my car and I, I don't know why, but there's this car rolling up, like exiting and, you know, come to think of it, it wasn't one and it was like, like more like three in the morning. Cause why would there's like, yeah, it was around three in the morning because the guy who was rolling up was a produce guy. Like he was going to work at supermarket and he does produce. And that's why he was so early, right? That's why I know it was more like three than one. And the funny thing is that he's afraid of me, me, who's like, you know, this little small, you know, this little girl who's like coming up to his window because he's kind of slowing down because he sees my car is off the road and I'm like, my hazards are on and stuff slowing down. And I, I'm like waving him down. And right now, if that happened to me right now, I'd be, hell no, am I going to wave down somebody at two in the morning? Like, I'd be so scared, right? But me, hearing me, I'm like waving this guy down, like with my mini skirt on, right? And he probably thought I was crazy. He was actually afraid of me because he didn't want to stop. But I was like, stop, please, please, please. Can you just take me? I asked him to drive me to my mom's place. Like thinking of it right now, I'm getting I'm getting my heart's like pumping really hard thinking like, why did I do that? <laughs> so he was like, he didn't want to take me. It was like, uh, yeah, no, I'm not, no, I'm not bringing you. No. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? Like, why am I asking this guy to take me somewhere? You know what I mean? So he didn't take me. He was too scared, but he goes, but I'll, when I get to my store, I'll call the police for you. So he, he takes off and I'm there alone again. 
and the police comes like really shortly after. So he must have been close by. Police guy comes. Okay, even now I'd be scared, right? Even if it's a police guy at three in the morning, though, like who knows, right? And so he stops, and luckily he had a part. He had a partner, so it was two of them. He sees me, and I'm like, I'm ashamed to say this, but like, I start to act like a little bit flirtatious, like, oh my gosh, like I crashed, please help me, and you know, like that because I was scared. Right? And he ended up taking me to home, and my dad was pissed, and he didn't even want to go get my car, and blah blah, and all that, and that's all history. But. The bottom line, I know that story was kind of long, but that was just coming to me. Bottom line is we have times in our lives where we go through scary shit and we don't realize it until like we don't realize we got past it. Like it was scary at the moment, but we actually survived it until later on. Yeah, because we're like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe like I cannot believe I did that. Literally 30 years later, I'm thinking back and thinking, wow, did I really do that? Did I just make that up? Like, did I just make that up in my head? Is that a weird memory, dream, or movie I watched? No, it was something I actually did. And it was, that's not the only thing I've done. Okay. I mean, I, my, my mom and dad, I put them through hell because I was just this fearless person all the time. And, and, and it wasn't because I'm fearless it was because we were young. And when we're young, we do stuff like that, right? So what I was wanted to kind of, you know, pivot to with that story was that we have to dig deep into our lives, into our memories, and think of all that crap that we did when we were young. And it doesn't even have to be something like that. I have other stories that are a little more mild than that, and some that are scarier than that, believe it or not. But we have to look back at those times and say, well, well, I survived that and it was okay. Like it felt like crap at the moment, but then after that it was done and I learned from it. Here's the key guys. What did I learn from that? One, I don't drive home late, sleepy and alone. Okay, never, I tried to never do that again. There were a couple more times that happened, but it wasn't, I had, my hands were tied. I had to do it. But but that's something that I learned. Or now that we have cell phones, you know, make sure your cell phone's charged or something, right? Make sure you call your parents before you leave the last place so that if you're not home an hour later, they come looking for you. Because <laughs> So that's, you know, you start thinking of like, what have I learned so that, Next time this happens, it's not going to be so crazy, right? And Chris, Christine says, I think I started getting more fearful once I had kids. I absolutely agree. I'm fearful for them. And I look back at my life and I'm like, God, please don't do anything that I did when I was young, you know? And they're actually really great kids. So, but you look at that stuff and you say, wait a minute, I went through that and I survived it and I learned from it. And yet I'm still afraid to do a Facebook live that's right. I'm calling you guys out. The ones that don't want to do Facebook lives because they're afraid. Okay. That's one of the major, major things people are afraid of in my, my spectrum of coaching here, because I'm always pushing Facebook lives yet. I, you know, I hear from people, Oh, I really want to do one, but can't get myself to do one, you know, like, and why, you know, we've survived worse. But why are we afraid to do Facebook lives? Does anyone know? Because there's one, I know there's one, there's about two or three things that people always say. Why are you afraid to do a Facebook live? What do you guys think it is? I'll give you three seconds. One, two, <laughs> because these comments are delayed. Okay, so one of them is judgment, right? That's a major one. People are afraid of being judged when they do a Facebook live because one, it might be their first time. They might be afraid, so they might be timid, and they might be thinking, well, people are going to not take me seriously, or people are going to think, how can I be an expert at anything if I'm afraid on this video? Like, I can't even do this video straight, yeah? Yep, she got it. Yep, I told you this is delayed. <laughs> I think some people are great if bring judge you mean being judged are afraid of being judged okay I, I think you're trying to say that yeah yeah you are yeah so exactly like <laughs> Sarah says I shine we all shine we just don't know it and the more we do it we shine even brighter Christine says they're afraid of what people will think 
Yes. And here's the thing. If you approach your Facebook lives with the intention of helping others, okay, so you're going out there on your Facebook live and it's not for you, it's for them, okay, once you do that, your fear of being judged or being thought bad of goes away. It's like me saying, hey, you know what? I got this awesome lipstick. It's going to make your lips, Sarah, it's going to make your lips look awesome, right? And I've did, if I did that on a live, why would I be afraid? I'm helping you. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't judge me because you're going to be like, oh, that is so cool. You know, can I, you know, I would love to see it or whatever. You're not thinking, wow, who is she to tell me what kind of lipstick looks good or, you know. That's something that we need to get over because we've gone through things in our life that are much, much, much worse. And so we got to go back, think about those things. What did we learn from it? You know, why we didn't do it again, or maybe we did it again a couple more times, but then after a while, we, we stopped doing it and we learned. It's the same thing when we do our lives. Sarah says, I get so many compliments on my lives. I'm just truly myself and how I can be there for them is not about me. Exactly. So it's the same when you're doing a live. You can go look back at it if you didn't feel good about it. I don't do that anymore, okay? Because I will totally judge myself. I will never do that. Unless it's something that was official, I might look back and see, wait, what did I say? So I make sure that I can continue doing the same thing or whatever. But you can look back at it if it's your first one, two, third video, whatever, and say, okay, what did I not like about it? What am I going to do better the next time? Remember the one, two, three, guys? One, what did I not like about what I did. What didn't work? Number two, what two things did work? So what one thing worked? What two things didn't work? No, wait, hold on. What three things worked? It's three, two, one. What two things didn't work? What one thing am I going to do next time to make it better? Okay, three, two, one. What three things didn't work? I mean, worked. What two things didn't? What one thing am I going to do to make it better the next time around? Now you notice I have more good things than bad things because we want to focus on the good things. We want to be doing more good things than bad things. So three things you did well, two things you didn't, one thing you're going to do better the next time. Okay. I'd rather do a live, Christine says, than to be in front of a hundred people in person. That's true. You know what? I'd rather sing in front of a hundred people than two people. Okay. So that is like, that's my my little thing. Well, two people maybe, but like, okay, it's easier to sing in front of a hundred people than five people because they're all kind of staring at you like, but that's another story. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that I provided some value for you guys. I wanted to come here and make up for the fact that I didn't show up yesterday. I was busy, busy, busy with the contest, getting people started. If you guys are not in the group and you want to join the contest, it's worth $5,400 right now. So go join the group. Kenna, join the group. <laughs> Are you in the group, Kenna? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, she is. Cool. Or is that Christine? <laughs> That's Christine. Yeah, so join the group if you're not. I'll drop the link again. Hope you guys got some value from this. Be courageous, everybody, because I know you guys have it all in you. Dig deep. Find the things you've gotten over in the past, and they're probably much bigger than doing something small like a Facebook Live or asking somebody about your opportunity or whatever it is that you are afraid to do. Okay. So anyways, I'll see you guys again on tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. So I'll be back here tomorrow. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for tuning in. I know some of you guys are on the East Coast, so I really appreciate it. And stay safe, stay well, and for goodness sake, live abundantly. I'll see you guys again on my next video. Aloha.